So I went to do step five. This company ordered a DOT drug screen for me to go and take and a pre employment so I actually had to take two drug tests before I could start driving again. Uh, Welcome back drivers to the recruiter call channel and in this story time video right here shout out to truck me eccentrically yeah I had to go there to pronounce that name what is it again eccentrically all right one more time eccentrically all right thank you very much you guys could go and make sure you check out truck eccentrically all right He's on YouTube. Make sure you go over there and subscribe. He's here to tell the story of what happened when he decided to go and get some CBD. And unfortunately, he was brought in for a random and he was test positive for, I guess, THB in his system because of the mistake that he made. He realized it. He took accountability for it. He had to go through the SAP program. And now he's back on the job realizing the mistake that he did. And uh, and going forward, he won't make that mistake again. But in this story time video, he explains what happened and all of the steps that was taken in the SAP program to get back on the truck. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. I filled a drug test. And that happened at the very beginning of August. I've been a truck driver for seven years. And when you are a truck driver, you are subject to random DOT drug screens. And I knew that. It had been a little over two years. You're supposed to get one, at least one every year. But it had been a little bit over two years since I had gotten one. Now I know you never, got, ever performed the duties of my job as a truck driver under the influence of anything. My last job that I had, I was a local truck driver. I went home every night. I was off on the weekends, and that's basically how it happened, okay? So here's what I did. I went home one weekend. It was a Friday. I got off work. I stopped by a store on my way home, and there's like hardly any stores that you can go to anymore that don't sell CBD or just straight up uh, what they call uh, Delta 8, Delta 9, uh, THC supplements, okay? I came home one day, stopped at the store, I saw that stuff, and I made a really stupid choice, a really selfish choice, to try some of it. And so I did. And I knew the risk that I was taking whenever I decided to do this, I didn't worry too much about it because like I said, I hadn't had a drug test in like over two years, which I was there for about a year and a half. My first year there, I was a temp, a temp driver, okay? After being a temp for a whole year, they finally hired me on and they just hired me. They didn't give me a pre-employment drug screen. They didn't give me anything, okay? They just hired me. Well, it wasn't until about six months after they hired me that they, they actually registered me into the FMCSA clearinghouse. And as far as I know, it's straight up illegal to hire any truck driver without giving them giving them a pre-employment drug screen, which they didn't do. And it's straight up illegal to, but it's the company's responsibility to pull the records from the clearinghouse, which they attempted to do about six months after they hired me. And apparently they 
they didn't do it. They made me uh, sign a consent uh, to release the information to them, which, by the way, like I said, guys, I've been a truck driver for seven years. I've never failed a drug test, never refused a drug test, never had any issues with substances at all. I, as soon as I failed the test, I had to talk to human resources in this well, their main corporate was in Illinois, and I had to call and talk to uh, human resources at their corporate office, and they let me go on the spot. As soon as it happened, they let me go. Didn't ask any questions or hardly, you know, except for why did you do it? So I dealt with human resources. At the same time, I kind of talked a little bit with the, uh, the people in charge in the southeast region out of the office that I worked out of. And they were really pissed off at me because they liked me and they didn't want to let me go. They were mad. They were, they were just basically like, you know, I can't, like, why would you do this? You know, you're, you're a good employee. We don't want to lose you. But they let me go. So that's all I'm going to say about it. I lost my job best job I ever had. I mean, I bought a house. I mean, it's not paid for, <laughs> but I, that job paid so well that even working there as a temp, I was able to purchase a house. So now I've got a mortgage, you know, I've got kids, I've got a wife, you know, I've got family, and I just lost my job. I'm 38 years old. I'm too old for this shit, you know. I messed up really bad. I had to come home from work and tell my wife what happened, and it was an extremely difficult conversation. I went from making, like I said, between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars a week to making absolutely nothing. The next thing that I had to do was reach out to. They have these companies, and it's basically just the business. Um, I'm not trying to sound pessimistic about this, but I am just kind of letting you know how it went. Like, they, they have companies <laughs> that run this program. It's called the SAP program, the Substance Abuse Program. And you have to reach out, unless you're just going to walk away and you're going to just throw your CDL in the trash can after you fill the drug test you only have one choice and that is to reach out to these companies now they're they're substance abuse counselors okay and the first thing that you're going to do is start forking out money like a lot of money it cost me almost a thousand dollars the big lightning strike just now it cost me almost a thousand dollars to get an SAP counselor and sign up for this program. Now, the first thing he does after you pay a crap load of money is he's going to set up a meeting, a, a meeting with you. It's probably going to be a Zoom meeting or, you know, you can choose to go into their office and he's going to give you a complete evaluation. You're going to fill out a ton of paperwork about your health history, if you have any substance abuse history, your criminal record, if you've ever been charged uh, with any drug charges or anything like that, they're going to look at all this information about you. And then they're going to evaluate you. They're going to give you a long interview. They're going to ask you a ton of questions. And it's up to you to answer them honestly. Okay. But there are six steps to this substance abuse program. The first step is your evaluation to the determination or the decision that I would be eligible for a non-DOT drug test after I completed a 20-hour course on substance abuse. And that was all online. I had to pay for it. It was actually separate. So the initial valuation, just to give you an idea about how much all this crap cost me, the initial evaluation was like four hundred dollars, 
it cost me $400 to talk to this guy on a Zoom meeting for about half an hour. They charged me $400 for that. Okay, then he told me that I had to take 20 hours of a substance abuse course. That was separate. Okay, I actually had to go uh, through a separate company to do that. And I think that was about $300. You're looking at $700 right there. Okay. It's not multiple choice. It's not no, multiple you got choice. They expect you to, to write sentences for your answers. Okay. The, uh, the first part of it that I did, I don't know if they're all the same or they're all different or what, but the first part of it that I did, I actually had to do research. I felt almost like I was taking some kind of college course or something. It was on that level. I had to do research. I had to get onto the uh, the CDC website, and I had to do research on uh, the drug-related uh, overdose deaths, like graphs and charts and stuff. I had to figure out um, how much drug abuse has escalated in the past. 20 years, I, and I had to like write a whole report about it, so that was the first thing I had to do, which took a while to do, uh, and then the rest of it, uh, it's just reading, and you have to do, like I said, you have to answer all the questions, you have to put in, you know, complete sentences and everything for your answers, and it's, it's like, it's like school okay for me to go and take a non-DOT, it was like a, a 10 panel drug screen, which I went and I took immediately and I passed it. It was negative. And that's basically when the job search started. Now, I can't tell you how many applications I filled out. I can't tell you how many companies I talked to. I talked to probably about 30 or 40 different companies. And most of them told me the same thing. We do not hire drivers in the SAP program. We can't hire you, not, you're not eligible. Step one is you get evaluated. Step two is you take that course. And depending on what your counselor uh, deems necessary for you to be eligible to go and take a non-DOT drug screen, it might take online courses, it might take uh, psychiatric uh, counseling it might take detox step three is the non-DOT 10 panel drug screen now you get a negative result on that you pass that one you're on step four okay step four is that you find a company that's willing to hire you they know the deal. They've pulled your clearinghouse records. They know the deal. They know what's up. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to run all your information. And granted, you guys, these companies are hard to find. Not only are the companies that hire SAP drivers hard to find, most of them aren't hiring because there are so many drivers in my particular situation. As I, I told them, I'm a SAP driver. I'm in the SAP program. They either hung up on me or they were like, well, sorry, you know, we can't, we can't have anything to do with that. We don't hire drivers in the SAP program. I was told that so many times over and over and over again. Once you get on step four and you've got a company that's willing to work with you, That's when, and only when, you're going to be able to go back and take the DOT drug screen that will ultimately put you back in service after you've been out of service. So, so I went are. to do step five. This company ordered a DOT drug screen for me to go and take and a pre employment so I actually had to take two drug tests before I could start driving again. 
Um, <coughs> once I pass that um, DOT, it's not a random. It's a return to duty drug screen. I passed that. And then that was when I went into step six of the SAP program. Now I'm on step six. It's the final step. So from what I understand, depending on whatever your counselor, your SAP counselor, determined about you, that is is how long you know you're going to be subject to getting random drug screens. It's a big deal with that, you know what I'm saying? That's how I was looking at the CBD stuff. I was like, okay, I'm not on duty. How is this any different than drinking when you're at home? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not doing it while I'm working. And the shit is legal. You can buy it in the freaking store. Okay? It's in every freaking gas station that you go into. So that's why I didn't think it was that big of a deal. And like I said, I made a stupid judgment. I made a stupid decision. And I knew deep down that if I had gotten drug tested, I would fail it. I didn't know that. Because I knew that the stuff I was taking had THC in it. So, all right, guys, there you have it. Truck me eccentrically. One more time, eccentrically. You guys can find him here on YouTube. Make sure you go and subscribe to him. Uh, the video is well over an hour long, and there's much more details that he goes into explaining the steps uh the process that he had to go through and all other good stuff in the video make sure you guys go over there and check them out uh give them a subscribe and let them know that lockout men sent you questions comments let's get the conversation started in the comments below have you guys went through the sap program i know some of you have if so you guys want to talk about it let us know in the comments below until next time everybody thank you for listening and i will come back again with another story time video here on the recruiter call channel Bye.